Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season two premiere of What If. Great season premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I really like this interesting approach. Once again, just the interesting thing that What If can do, where it can change like genres and tones, and we're going for a very cyberpunk noir feel, because I've never seen the Blade runner movies they're just movies i've had on the back burner of like i need to check these out i've heard nothing but good things about them but obviously definitely obviously i've seen bits and pieces of like previews and stuff like that for like 2049 but it definitely gives that like i said that cyberpunk noir feel to it i mean if, if i had to compare it to anything else like I mean, in that same vein i'd be like yeah altered carbon because that's the closest thing i've like uh watched that's in that same like cyberpunk noir uh veil uh vein sorry so i thought that was so interesting and putting nebula in that tone and vibe and and darkness of the city you know seeing like for one we don't really get a lot of time on xandar like i can't remember it's been a little it's been a hot minute since i rewatched guardians of the galaxy volume 2 but it's like because obviously current mcu wise it got destroyed before infinity in between guardians 2 and infinity war um but i don't Remember, if you go to, they went to Xandar at all in Volume Two. I actually don't remember off the top of my head. It's prevalent in One, but it, you still never really get to explore it too much. You only get like the Nova Base. That's kind of the only place in some parts of the city, I think. But that's about it. But kind of getting that seedy underbelly because in this world, Ronan killed Thanos, but not only Thanos, he also killed Gamora too. And now in this world, uh, um. Uh, nebula is all alone so once again it's, it's that interesting thing of how her arc played out in the movies like you, we saw her arc over the course of guardians one two infinity war and endgame and now we get to see in this capacity you know who she becomes on a different path when she doesn't have her sister there to kind of draw her in it doesn't have the guardians to become her new family she found a new family when she was lost when she had lost everything someone was given willing to give her a shot and that was nova prime and she ends up joining their rank as a corpsman i, I believe is her rank so it's like yeah she's kind of a police officer which is kind of wild um but I just thought that was so interesting but i'm unsure where that's supposed to take place i'm assuming that's supposed to take place like story beat wise because she's been worn for like five years so i'd say this takes place like what would have initially been hadn't it been like five years since xandar like kind of shut down because they put up a barrier to protect them from ronin um i think so because obviously so that would put this like 2019 so this would have been around the time infinity war happened probably later because like once again the dates of the movies don't always correlate to the dates inside the mcu even pre-time skip it it's not always a one-to-one -one. because i think infinity war still technically took place in 2017 so we would have been like part way into the blip at this point in time maybe probably not i i, I don't know but i just thought that was so interesting that they kind of think about. I'm also curious how people are going to feel about just like Ronan killing Thanos. Oh, how did he do it? Oh, he did it. I know people had issues with just how quickly Ultron like split Thanos in half. I get it. You're also like moving really quickly. Like that might not be like, mm, how does that work? You know, it's like, right. It's a, a animated episode or something that's on the shorter end. So it's like, you got, you got to blaze past some of those details. You know, these are anthology episodes. So you can't like really go as probably hard into paint with them as you would want to. So you probably have to cut some corners here and there. So I'm curious how people are going to feel about that, considering the Ultron Thanos of it all last season. I wonder, I wonder, I was about to say, I wonder if we're going to get that. Well, cause well, we got, well, we had Thanos good guy last season. We also had dead Thanos at Ultron's head. We also had zombie Thanos um last season so i'm wondering is he going to be like the R uh the iron man i was about to literally say rdj the the iron man of this season where like tony dies like almost every universe last season so i wonder if Thanos is going to be kind of filling that role a little bit to this extent but like i said I'm, I'm going on a bit of a tangent but like i said i like this deep darker like underbelly and that this all starts with the murder yondu's murder and Nebula wanting to investigate, but no one else wants to because they're like, who cares? She, it's Yondu, he's a criminal scum, got what he wanted, deserved. Because the entire city of Xandar, because they've been cut off from the outside world, you know, people get stuck on a planet that long, cut off from the light, all they know is darkness. Eventually, like, it's going to creep into you and just like, the cities become, like, in, in totality, a, 
a uh, dark underbelly of, of a, a you know a shadow of its former self in some capacities. But Nebula, I love the whole thing of like right. They're looking for the killer's weapon. What they should have been looking for is the victims. And I love the whole her playing that recording because I don't even. It, once again, it's been a while since I even saw Volume One. But I'm like, did Nebula and Yondu have a history? Maybe that was set up in Volume One or Volume Two. Maybe that came up, and I just don't remember. I don't remember them like that. Maybe there are hints to them having a history or maybe just in this universe. Well, it might just be like because she's a cop here on Xandar, like and him being a criminal, they cross paths because he probably he's got locked down here. So because no one's going in or out. So he just happened to be stuck here. So they probably got associated that way because I was about to say, like, I don't remember there any hints to them having a history in the movies, but it's like, right, because of their circumstances, they ended up having history. She ended up, I, like I said, I like her playing that recording and ended up like him doing his whistle made her able to get his, um, his flying arrow, but it seems like there's some designs on it. So she has to go, uh, see somebody about these designs at the same time. She, I think this was, I can't remember. I think this was before, you know, she saw Howard after she had talked to Nova Prime trying to figure this, solve this murder case and find out what it's all about. We do see Groot. We see, um, we see Groot. We see, oh God, Drax. And we also see, what's home dude's name? Meeks. Uh, the dude that's always with Korg since Ragnarok. I want to say that, ain't his name Meeks or something like that? little bug dude uh him and we see korg but yeah i love that it's like she's like oh who's the and she's like oh, i'm here to see the big guy i'm like who's the big guy gonna be of course it's gonna be um howard and i love that he calls himself i think he didn't he say like oh just give big daddy a moment or something it's like oh it's so weird hearing hearing coward the duck say that i don't know why it's just extra funny thinking about like you know it being seth green saying i don't know why it's just it's hilarious to me but yeah um, I love that he's like, I have no idea what this is. Like, you'd have to be a nut job to know what it is. And Korg is there like, oh yeah, I know exactly what this is. This is like a mainframe, uh, the, uh, power cell thing. And he's like, you know what this is? Yeah, I know a lot more. I'm not just a handsome face, but it's like, yes. What could be hidden there are, and once again, I love those, I love, I'm a sucker for that comedy beat of, Oh, I said a whole bunch of things. It's like, well, go back one. Oh, you mean this? No, the other one. This? No, back again. Oh, it being a, uh, potentially a core for the design um, schematics for the shield. That's, they even said it themselves that this shield is supposed to last like 50 years, potentially. So, and Nebula would have to go to this core, but it goes, it's in a side of town. It's like, yeah, once you go there, you don't come back. And core's like, and by that, he means that people die and they are, they're dead forever and they stay dead it's like come on I, I, okay cohort but um it's up to nebula to uh you know solve this so she ends up bring it breaking out what was it uh yon rog and i was like i won't lie to you i was like who because when she was like oh, i'm gonna need someone to help me hack into this i immediately thought which, which obviously the person that probably would have helped more with that would be rocket probably but i was thinking like because he's a thief i was like peter but because we we don't i mean this probably would have, like i said i think this is pre well that, that must mean he never got peter in this universe maybe or maybe i mean to be fair he was stuck on xandar so like peter might be out there somewhere else with the other ravengers like he probably never became a guardian probably still stayed with the ravengers i mean groot's there but no rocket so they must have gotten separated at that time too or something because you would have you would have seen rocket in that because rocket and Groot are always a team so like he would have so i don't know just some kind of interesting little details. Like I said, even like, I didn't talk about it. Like I brought up Drax being there, but it's like, right, because he's there, you can only assume his family might be dead because Ronan's, no, Thanos is the one who killed his family. So that definitely already happened probably by this point and him being stuck, he probably just had nowhere to go. So he's just there gambling at uh, Howard's place. But either way, I'm going on this whole tangent. The person, like my my thought was initially, the first person that came to mind was like, "Oh, is it going to be Peter Quill that she ends up breaking out of prison?" It's like, no, it's Jon Rog. And I was like, "Who the hell is that character?" It wasn't until like part way after he was broken out that I'm like, "Is that who I think it's supposed to be?" I'm looking at him like listening to the voice, looking at the character design. I'm like, is that supposed to be Jude Law's character from Captain Marvel? Yes, it is. I mean, probably wouldn't have got I basing it on that. I'm, I'm glad it actually is Jude Law, because obviously they're not always able to get the actors who played them in the MCU. I mean, 
he's still alive out there in the universe, isn't he? I mean, obviously, it never came up in uh, spoilers. Well, it's not even a spoiler. It never came up in the Marvels, so I'd assume he's still alive out there. Um, because I, I, if I, to, I mean, to be fair, it's like been like what thirty or so years, because that was still that was in the nineties. But like, yeah, she Carol let him get away at the end of Captain Marvel. But that's also the reason why I couldn't remember the character's name because I was like, I, I've not seen Captain Marvel since it was originally in theater, so I haven't seen it in like five years, four years. So, but yeah, like if I didn't find out, like if it, Jude Law wasn't voicing the character, I probably would have never fully, fully correlated that. I would have had to look it up. But seeing Jude Law's name, I'm like, okay, that's who that's supposed to be. Especially with the whole yellow eyes, because I'm like, I distinctly remember. But I think some of the uh, don't some of the. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't he one of the few people that specifically has yellow eyes or something? Like I said, I'm going on this whole tangent. I, I don't know. I just... But him and Nebula get to the core, and it's like, well, of course he's going to end up betraying you. I mean, the guy, literally, you, you disabled a, uh, the... What'd you call it? The ejector seat or whatever from your car because you knew exactly that he'd try and get away. So, it's already kind of seemed like a treacherous bastard, and he ends up, she ends up getting the data, the schematics or whatever, for the the uh, the barrier, and he hijacks it from her, and was like, I was like, I was kind of halfway expecting you to have some countermeasure. We found out she did later on, but she couldn't play her hand at that moment, so they end up getting away. It's actually really brutal. I was like, okay, she's going to obviously get away from all the... Nope, they're beating the crap out of her and they're electrocuting. I was like, that's extremely brutal. It's also... It adds layers to it when you actually think about, like, it just... I don't know. We know that Nebula's kind of going through it. Not even kind of. We know she's going through it of, like, what her father did to her, you know, so it's just like... I don't know. It just makes it... It's like, you know, she's already suffered a lot, so just... I don't know. Any physical pain or, like, torturous pain she goes through you just feel it just adds extra to the trauma of what she's had to endure i don't know but yeah she ends up going back to howard and it's like right help me out uh hook a girl up with an arm you know give me some guns and stuff you know i'm, I'm asking for service here so they luckily put her back together and i love that she's kind of the new yondu in this universe where it's like you know obviously mcu wise uh craglin kind of became the new yondu in a lot of capacities. So she's got the coat and the little uh, thing Cracklin has, you know, to help with the whistle thing. So I just, I, I love that. And uh, the squad goes locked and loaded. Obviously, Howard was like, I don't want to get involved, but it's like, no, nah, like, you know, people, you know, right, um, Ronan will overthrow this place. It's like, yeah, but business was still going on. It's like, well, this, well, that. Well, your liquor license will be taken. All right, locked and loaded, boys. So. I love them, like, the freeze frame woman, Cork being like, yeah, we look cool. And also, uh, Nebula showing off and, like, whipping the arrow back and forth and taking out a whole bunch of guys. And he's like, oh, show off. She's like, it's not showing off. It's having style. It's called having style. Get some. He's like, get some? I'm wearing a bandana. I was like, okay. It wasn't until then he said that. I was like, oh, you little Rambo. Little Rambo-ish. So... Guns are blazing, they do their thing. It turns out that Nebula knew that, um, knew that, Nova Prime had turned her back on everything. It's like, the moment you told me to do whatever it takes, I knew I couldn't trust you. So, I love the whole Bringing back the triple cross of it all, I thought was pretty dope. But, um, yeah, our uh, ragtag group ends up ta tackling things and ultimately comes down to Nebula and Nova Prime. Didn't even try to kill or try to offer her a hand, which is very poetic and um, it all coming full circle of like, right, you gave me a criminal a second chance. So now I'm trying to do. The same thing for you. Like, you are going to get locked up for this, but you deserve to be locked up for what you did. But I I knew you were going to betray me, but it doesn't sting any less because you were that person. I mean, especially considering, once again, what Nebula's been through. You were that person that reached out to her, figuratively and literally, when she needed it most. You gave her a second chance. You became that. This whole situation gave her a new purpose again, you know, just like the Guardians obviously do in the main lane. Main line uh continuity so i just you know but 
uh, Nova Prime still tried to kill her and fell to her death. It's like, yeah, poetic justice. Obviously, they ended up destroying, destroying like, the only ship we saw out there, which was Ronin's. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, that's still not... I'm also curious, it doesn't seem like he had an Infinity Stone, so it doesn't seem like he's collecting those. I wonder, did, before he ended up... I mean, the Guardians were the reason why the whole... It's, it's the reason why um, the... I mean, they're the main reason why, if I remember correctly, why the Infinity, Infinity Stone was in play was because of them. Because wasn't that the thing that Quill ended up stealing, if I remember correctly? So, without them in play, Ronan never got it, I guess, in his continuity. God, it didn't seem like... they would It felt like they would have shown it if he was using that to go up against Thanos, but he didn't. And I feel like, well, I mean... Would he have been able to... I'm trying to think, would he have been able to stop himself from getting killed if he had an Infinity Stone from a ship being exploded? But my point was, he was the only ship out there, so I don't know if that's supposed to be like, oh, indicative of, you didn't see it, but other ships got destroyed in the process, or is it just like, all his forces are not with him, he's the main head of this force, so maybe that's all there is a Ronin's group, because everyone else that was under his power is just like scattered to the wind. I'm trying to remember like, didn't he have a massive force with him during the first Guardians movie? I don't remember. So I was like, that's why I'm like, Ronan's dealt with, but like, is the threat of his army dealt with too? Or is that all there is to it? But either, you know, maybe it's a thing of there were many ships, like that's a massive ship and there's many ships on it. And so all his crew was there. So they are all dead. Uh, because now the barrier is open and light has been restored to Xandar. So now the question is, uh, well, without Nova Prime, where do they go from there? What role does Nebula, st like, does she kind of stay like kind of a, a cop of justice for um, Nova, uh, not Zo Nova, for like Xandar or what? Because they also didn't just get rid of like, they also got rid of dirty cops too. So bring back, but she's probably going to act as a little bit of a peacekeeper, while towing that line, because obviously she has a connection through the criminal world because of Howard, and so maybe there's some equilibrium that can be found there, but also, you know, is this just going to be her new home? What is this, what does this say about her going forward? Like I said, especially in this universe where there is no Guardians of the Galaxy, and even that there is, they may not be the same... Because there's still going to be Ravengers out there. And so what that necessarily looks like, you know, especially now that Zandu, I mean, I said Zandu, that uh, Yandu is dead. But once again, he'd been away from all the other Ravengers anyway. So he was stuck here on Xandar. So that does make you just interesting things of like, right, because there's so many people that were just stuck on that planet. Now you have free reign. I'm sure Howard's just going to stick around because it's like, yeah, this has become his new home and territory. But for a lot of people, it's like, well, we just... Once again, it's just that greater thing of like, what does this mean in a greater ripple effect of this universe? Of what does this, what do these stories look like going forward? We'll never potentially know. Uh, I'd assume they're going to do the same thing, which led to the multiverse, uh, the Guardians of the Multiverse, like, but something like oh, the storylines will eventually converge like they did last season. We'll see. I, I saw the one trailer. I know there was another trailer release, but I didn't watch it. I don't want to know. I'm taking these episodes in and stride of just... Because I also avoided the titles. I also made sure to avoid the um, casting. So I, I don't like see like, oh, who's... who's uh, it, so it doesn't give me an idea of what characters are, are in these particular stories. So I avoided a lot of that. So I have no idea. I, obviously, because of the tease, because of the trailer, I do have an idea of some of the stories. But I've avoided a lot of the context and what they might... In, in, entail so I'm also curious about the time length because this is like in totality it's like what 27 minutes I think in total or something like that 27 28 probably more like 25 or 26 without the uh without the credits but I thought I remembered them saying last season because like some of the episodes last season were like a little over 30 minutes I believe if I'm remembering correctly but I could have sworn they said something or at least I heard talks about those episodes were supposed to be a little longer than what they were, but just for time and production wise, they had to, they were cut down a little bit. So I'm curious. I'm, with the length of this episode, it makes me think like, oh, maybe that's just the standard length they're going for. Maybe that was just like a rumor. Maybe there was no validity to that. But I remember hearing them say that those episodes last season were supposed to be a little longer. But maybe maybe they weren't. Maybe they were always meant to be that length. I don't know. So that kind of threw me because I was almost expecting like a full like at least like a 44 minute, but also like you know. 
even that extra amount makes an episode that much more expensive, especially on the animation front. So probably that's why they're probably keeping it like under 30 minutes. Probably some episodes might be a little over, but once again, it's just the Disney plus of it all. It's like the different ranges of like lengthwise for episodes and stuff. It's just interesting. But anyway, like I'm excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us. Uh, that's obviously going to be dropping tomorrow. Once again, these episodes are dropping once a day. So that's pretty um, interesting release schedule. So, but uh, you know, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm curious to see where the next episode, well, what the next episode entails and where it takes us in this grand multiverse adventure. Uh, but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.